anyway, uh, so I got down on my knees, and I had resolved before I got there to make sure that I thanked Amma because um, I think what she does is an amazing thing and uh, so many people are so busted up about it I don't really think that very many people take the moment to say thank you and I wanted to be sure I did um, now the first time I saw Amma um, I was told by one of her assistants uh, not to look her directly in the eyes and um, uh, at the first time I saw him, and when the moment came, I I wanted to just be defiant and look her in the eyes, but I just I just didn't. I, I was I was in a different place uh, mentally speaking. I I was it, it moved me in a way, and I just it didn't think about it at the time. Now the same is true this time, insofar as I didn't think about it, but uh, no one actually told me not to this time, which is, which was good because after I received my hug and she was chanting something in my ear, uh, which I memorized but I won't repeat because that's between Amma and me but um, I can't really explain how I felt while she was embracing me so many things it was one of those moments where you where stuff just goes in in, in different directions um, your mind is flooded with all sorts of uh, things, memories, hopes, desires, um, all sorts of stuff uh, just poured through me and uh, one of the main things was it takes you right back the way Alma embraces you is very much like you're a little toddler and she's your mother and um, it took me right back to when I was a little tot in preschool and you know I used to hug my mom in, and because I was so small uh, you end up hugging into their legs you know and that kind of thing and uh, I had this sort of connection so you can imagine there's an awful lot of emotion uh, that goes along with that as well uh, which is kicking off stuff in the brain okay anyway um, and after I received my hug and she was done with her chant, uh, normally she just gives you a little sweet in the flower petal and you go on your way. Um, but I went back on my ankles to look up at Amma and I clocked her right in the eyes. I didn't do it on purpose, it just happened. And I said thank you. And Amma looked at me exactly the way I know I've looked at my own children and the way my mom used to look at me when I was little and um, Alma really does think of herself as your mother and even though she's not my natural mother she made me feel the love I feel for my natural mother the way my mother feels for me it was beautiful and since I haven't seen my mom for five years it was a really big deal but that's not all that's what I saw with my eyes in that moment but in my mind's eye I saw something far surpassing spectacular because as Alma looked at me with that expression and gave me a little nod when I said thank you behind her head there was a gold sphere hovering uh, maybe an inch or two inches above the crown of her head and there was a series of concentric circles emanating from this gold sphere and getting larger and larger and they had streaks of white and yellow and blue light streaking out in like every third degree if you cut a circle up it was like just loads of streaks of light blue and gold and yellow shining out from this sphere and the concentric circles were in such a way as it, it seemed like I was looking into a tunnel of light with this orange sphere as its final destination 
it was in all intents and purposes a halo now I didn't see that with my eyes I saw that with my mind's eye but let me tell you what um, I couldn't stop seeing it um, uh, I didn't see it in the moment but every time I think of the moment that's what I remember seeing it's hard to describe because I know when I was actually in that moment I didn't see that so um, yeah that was my religious experience and um, now I want to talk a little bit about it what happened all right now my roommate here on the boat, uh, Jen, uh, her and her boyfriend and I were having a conversation a couple of weeks ago about the interdependence between memory and personality and uh, aspects of consciousness. And uh, Jen is a psychology student and she's in the middle of studying consciousness, which is why the topic comes up so often. And we have some pretty interesting conversations about it. Anyway, I was talking about memory and uh, you know I mean basically in a nutshell uh, just to fill you in uh, you know we tend to remember in the long term we tend to remember things which make a particularly deep impression on us for whatever reasons at the time the event happens so if something very very good happens or something very very bad happens or if something happens for the first time that we've never experienced before those types of things can leave a lasting impression whereas you know what you had for breakfast three months ago um, probably didn't leave a lasting impression because there was no reason for it too it didn't alter the way you look at anything it was mundane and so it's my personal opinion that uh, the deeper the impressions something makes on us the more likely we are to remember it long term and the more often we're probably going to remember it as well and I was talking to Jen and John about this and about how that's one of the defining aspects of trauma is because when someone suffers a trauma um, they tend to one of the defining characteristics of it is it replays itself over and over and over and over again in your head and it doesn't even have to be trauma that happens to you it can be trauma it can be something traumatic that you witness um, but in either case whether it's something that you witness or if it's something that happens to you one of the reasons it was probably traumatic in the first place was because whatever it was was unexpected and it's that inability to anticipate something which exacerbates our reaction to the event that it's a, a trauma is a lot more complicated than that but without that it's not traumatic okay um, it's an essential component of what makes something trauma trauma it replays itself in our head and it can have lasting effects on our psychology and henceforth our entire approach to life or people it depends on what we're talking about which caused the trauma but uh, this can be any kind of trauma you know it does tend to linger in the brain and John asked me uh, is there such a thing as positive trauma you know are there things that can be so overwhelmingly positive for you that they keep reliving themselves over and over and over again in your brain and they make a, a lasting impression on you and change the way that you see people in life and so forth and I'm like absolutely of course I call those peak experiences um, as an aside I've got a video called peak experiences where I discuss some down below and it might be worth checking that out just so you can see the kind of thing I'm talking about 